I was asked, what's the benefit of chugging root beer? And I mean, nothing other than it sets the tone for the day. And the day in question is my max effort bench day. What I'm thinking is, with how last week's close grip went, I should probably embrace some movement variability and jam out of some close grip inclines today. Maybe we'll do a single, maybe we'll do a triple, maybe we'll do a five, maybe we'll do all of the above, depending on how it feels. Raise the rack height up a hole because that felt freaking terrible for 135 and I'm hoping that a better unrack fixes a lot of that. What I'm telling myself is, if I don't wake up for this set, it's gonna be a really fucking bad day, so we better wake up for this set. Yeah, good enough. Hand off. More waking up. And I figure three, two, optimistic five here. What I'm trying to remember is that I cooked the shit out of both overhead press and dips on Monday, so I need to not be upset with myself if that feels heavier than I want it to feel, but we're going up anyways, so let's try to not be terrible at lifting and stuff. Yeah. Yep. Found where the limit is today, I guess. And what I can think about that is, obviously it's not as good as my incline was pre pectare peak bench strength, but so much freaking better than it was immediately after the surgery and through that whole prep at 300 pounds. Like the fact that I can do that now, going in the right direction so I can't be upset. Anyways, on some reverse grips and because I'm lazy and stupid, starting at two reds. That may be hang out just in case. Yeah. Goal here is to make this feel good enough that it's not my last jump of the reverse grips. Come on, nice and tight. High chest, high chest. Power. I felt it was sketchy on the pack. Oh, okay. Yeah. Don't know what that was. It just felt like a little bit of binding up. I'm like, I don't want to go through that. And I mean, obviously not ideal. Maybe being a pussy. But considering what I have been through in the last year or so with the pack, don't want to risk it and i think the smart move is just gonna be move on and probably run a little fluffier intent on the machine press than i had been planning and like i can't be upset with how it felt like because I, I really should expect it with how i feel and how hard i did push the earlier week session and i think again all i really got to do is learn from the not feeling good enough to be productive on a reverse script modify the split a little bit and we should be more good to go for future sessions and like really if we think about how aggressively 
I've ramped dips since I started trusting the shoulder more and more on them. Like it makes sense that it's going to catch up to me sooner than later. And like all I gotta do is just better manage training around those dips because obviously I think the dips are doing something good for me. I don't think the dips are a problem. And I think that if I want to get bench to be more better, I should be able to do that by finding a way to better tolerate the dippings. In an effort to keep her manageable today, this will probably be work sets. Prioritize the stretch. Prioritize pushing all the way through. Try to get more comfy with the pack as I go. Based on how everything has felt so far today, I might actually make the internet happy for once on these and stay with the 70s. And somebody asked me about the Paul Carter pullover tricep things. I've never done them before, so we're gonna find out. I'm actually okay with that. And grabbed a smaller dumbbell because that felt heavier than I was anticipating. But that is freaking gnarly right in that long head. If I could not take my hat off. Yeah, still okay with that. One more for good measure because I actually feel pretty freaking good. That's how you know that I actually like it. And I don't know what now, I guess long rope, squeeze into some shoulder extension or, you know, with the triceps, try to finish with the tiniest bit of shoulder IR in the bottom. Whew. Probably use less weight next set too. Little less weight. Yeah, that is more appropriate loading probably. Still burnt out way too fast. Sad reality is that the low row bench that I've been using for the floor flies is occupied. So gonna share the pack deck with Joel. And since for all intents and purposes, he is the antagonist of this vlog series, the enemy, the competition, I'll just work with whatever he's working with. And I'm actually a little bit surprised by how light it is. I might have to bug him about this because we definitely need to go up here. Like maybe he just finished a drop set. Maybe. I hope he just finished a drop set. Cause during his set, he was making a lot of noise and I got there a little bit late. So like, I don't know. I hope that wasn't actually hard for him. Cause if it was, he's probably in trouble. 
Did you do like a triple drop set there? Uh, it's in my routes. Oh. Slightly more disappointed than it would have been. Why? I just felt very light. Yeah. Update. Joel's going up. <clears throat> and we went up because I can't let myself get beat by 181. Notice how much more controlled and squeezy I am out of the bottom. That's mostly because I'm afraid to rip my pack off. That's not me being better than him, to be clear. It's honestly like the thing that scares me the most is I don't want to be like ramming it. Which I probably need to get over sooner than later, but I don't want to do that today. I hate looking down when I do these because I see how much smaller my right boob is than my left. Yeah. Right ball too. No? Aren't you a doctor? Aren't yeah, you supposed been, to do uh, that? Have you been reading the, uh... I know I've talked a lot of shit about Thursday being my swingy, cheaty delt day, but... I'm tuckered out, and you'll also notice that I'm sitting down. Not because I think it's better, but because I'm too lazy to stand up right now. The angle actually feels really nasty on these, so maybe I need to do this more. Really like these last week, so gonna run them again. A little smaller kettlebell because blue one was probably a bit aggressive. I was having trouble managing the low back, trying to keep it driven against the pad. So this feels like more appropriate work. And trust me, she is still freaking gnarly. Oh boy. Okay, lefty. Where's the hole? Got it. So we had a lot of really freaking good transitions in a row while pushing the diet and training really freaking hard. So like, I shouldn't be surprised that a day creeps in where I feel like balls and not in the good way. And like, obviously I'm not like, yay, today wasn't very good, but I also know that it's not the end of the world. And I know that I will be able to bounce back from this. And I know that it's just gonna be as simple as better managing the loading, especially on my dips on the Monday session, because it's like, a few weeks ago when I was just doing dips on Monday, like body weight was feeling scary. I wasn't able to push them hard. Like Thursday was cruising smoothly, but ramping up loading super aggressively on the dips. It's like no freaking shit that if I go from zero weight on the dips to 135, that I'm going to have a lot more fatigue from that. And some of that is going to bleed over into how my ability to press the shoulders and everything feels today. So I don't think the dips are the problem. I think that pushing dips that heavy and then expecting to be able to train productively this close to that heavy push, that is the problem. And that's what I need to solve with some split modifications. And I still want to push dips hard, probably not quite to the same extent that I did last week, but I'm gonna bring them over to this day, bring something back over to the Monday to make up for it. I don't know what yet, but we'll get there when we get there. So yeah, that is what I got today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And if you are looking for more help, hop on to the Team Activated Community on School thing is getting freaking sweet in there with so many people asking questions contributing and like the more people in there the more people that are asking questions the more people that are providing answers the more just intermingling of ideas and experiences and thought process around training the better everyone is going to get and i think like the coolest part of it right now is like someone will post a video or ask a question and you have eight different coaches with eight different ideas and what i want people to realize from all those ideas is that like yes they're different ideas for the most part but they're still trying to solve the same problem. But if you can understand how 
different ideas and different applications can be used to solve one problem, you expand your toolkit and then the better you're gonna be able to adapt your toolkit to help different individuals depending on the circumstance because it's not like there's gonna be one right answer. There's more than one way to skin a cat and I'm super stoked that that is happening already in the community. So if you guys want to, sign up. If you don't, don't. Peace out, have a good night. Team Activated is how we're going to make powerlifting better for lifters and coaches everywhere. It's not just a place for you to get exclusive educational content from me, see tutorials, or have access to my movement library. It is a place for lifters and coaches to interact with each other, ask questions, and help the entire group get better as a whole. You'll be able to get form checks, troubleshoot programming, get advice on injuries and nutrition, and more importantly, I'm putting up new videos every single week to better help your education as a powerlifter. So if you take training or coaching seriously and want to be the best at it that you can be, hop in the group because the more people in it, the more valuable it becomes.